as part of this Azadi ka Amrit Mahusab. I know it is after a long time that we are uh, we are assembled on this uh, virtual platform, a very good platform on which we have completed 76 lectures oh. and uh, wide uh, topics. And in the same diversified topics, today again, it's a very uh, open topic and very interesting topic. And uh, that topic is nothing but uh, scientific uh, publishing. Uh, how to write scientific papers and how to uh, pu publish them. So it's a very important topic for every scientist, every student, every faculty member, because you know the Indian position, uh, we have to really improve a lot, though there is a significant uh, rise in this. And uh, let me just introduce the uh, speaker, a very renowned speaker, uh, Professor Sargi uh, Saveri who is the visiting scholar at the UC Davis in uh, US and honorary professor at one of our Indian universities, that is uh, G.B. Pant University of Agriculture and Technology. And most importantly, uh, he is the editor-in-chief of this Food Security, a very important journal. And I think he has, uh, uh, to his credit, more than 3,000 research papers, which he has uh, uh, reviewed which he has uh, edited. So he's a very uh, renowned person. Uh, Professor uh, Severi is a plant pathologist with a specialization in the field of epidemiology and system analysis. His research addresses the focuses, uh, it addresses the forces that shape production situations in agriculture and the dynamic linkages between crop health and the climate agronomic and socioeconomic context of production situations. His work aims at applications for sustainable crop health management and food security. He has spent a large part of his professional career in the tropical world, and that includes the West Africa, Central America, Southeast and South Asia, with different national and international institutions. His work has been or is focusing on plant disease epidemiology, and IPM in vegetables, field legumes, and cassava, which is in uh, West Africa. Uh, complex system management in uh, Central America, epidemiology and disease management in wheat and grapevine in the France, and management of rice health in the tropical Asia. He is involved in international research and education network in plant health, along with colleagues in France, in India, the, that is your GB Pant University, and in the USA, the UC Davis, Pennsylvania State. He has been elected the vice president of the International Society of uh, Plant Pathology. And he was also elected fellow of the American Phytopathological Society. Since January 2019, he is the editor in chief of this ISPP journal, which is very popular, that is your food security. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Sargi, for having agreed and sparing your time. Uh, to deliver this lecture for our uh, universities, for our institutes uh, on this very important topic. And I'm sure that this lecture will, will provide a lot of uh, critical points uh, for the improvement. And so that our rejection rate is really reducing because mostly what happens once we are submitting the papers, uh, the, the next day we receive sometimes the rejection letters. And maybe this is just because of few points which we don't take care. So all those tips, guidelines, because you are uh, in, in, uh, you have you have handled so many journals. So I think uh, it will be better to know all these details from you. And uh, our our approach uh, should be such that uh, we should focus more on the science than on the personal interests. That no, I have to publish more papers, so I have to just submit the paper. No. So let us see that what the science requires. And then accordingly, we can reshape our research areas, we can reshape our publications. So over to you, Sarji, and the floor is yours now. Thank you. Thank you very much once again. Thank you very much, Dr. Agraval, for this so very kind introduction. Uh, it's, it's a great pleasure, and it is actually a, an honor for me to, to be speaking before you. Uh, I am very honored to be invited to give this uh, talk. Uh, you know, we are, I'm just like you, I'm a scientist, and we, we all face the same 
problems. And, and a few days ago, I had another manuscript rejected by a journal. Uh, it happens to every, each and every one of us. Uh, it's always is painful. Uh, it's always a painful experience. Um, I will be sharing my slides in a minute, but I would like to give some some of the, my, my personal motivations for, for giving this uh, seminar to your uh, network. The, the first of them is that I have been uh, collaborating and working with the University of GB Pont uh, in Pont Nagar <coughs> for, for many years. And so I, I've started to give a class there and that class is about scientific writing. And so what I will be presenting to you today is the outline of this class. And so I am I am a beginner. I am I am a beginner in this field in teaching that. And as a beginner, I'm I'm asking your opinion about what I'm I'm saying, about the class I am I am giving. And if you have if you have comments to make or criticism and, and suggestions to make, I shall be very glad to receive them. It's 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 also very easy via email. My email is easy. It's s s a v a r y at gmail dot s s a v a r y zero one at gmail dot com. So it's very easy to write to me, and I shall be grateful for any comments uh, you might have. So that's the first reason. The, the another reason is that. I have been working, I am not, not an Indian scientist, of course, I'm sorry about that, but I have been working with Indian colleagues for many, many years. And what I realize is that actually, despite all the efforts and despite all the, all the work which is being done in India, very little of the research of the science which is produced in India is being published in international journals. Why is that? You could say, well, the reason is that a lot of them are being rejected. Well, this is not the only one reason. It may be a reason, but there is another reason, which is very simple, which is that India is a very, very big country. It's a country of 1.4 billion people. It has a huge, a tremendous uh, uh, scientific community. It also has a very, very effective and efficient and, and very big publishing industry. And so there are many journals in India. It is, and therefore it is legitimate that Indian scientists would prefer publishing in Indian journals because that's their country and it concerns situations that, that pertain to their country. The, the downside of this, however, is that is two things. One, the Indian, the, the research which is conducted by, by India is downplayed by the outside world. And this is unfair. This is not, this is not just. Uh, the world sh should know, the, the world should be aware of the science which is conducted in India. And there are many things that India does that very few other countries are doing. And India's research is in no way inferior to research which is done elsewhere. It's just that it is not now. The other reason uh, for publishing internationally is that the world in the crisis we are living today, the world needs Indians, India's science. India's science can make a difference in this, in the crisis, in the situation where the world currently is. It is, it is real. It is important. From my viewpoint, as as editor of a small journal, I can see that that there are contributions that should be made more broadly available. To the wider public, to the wider scientific community, we, we food security as a journal is a, is at a crossing road between two uh, common goods. One common good is science, and we all are scientists. We are a collective dealing with science. And the other common good is is food is food security. It's a common good. There are laws in India. India is one of the only country. Uh, on, on, one of the very few countries where 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 laws have been passed to prevent people to be hungry. And, and, and there are very few others. There is Brazil, but it doesn't work very well in Brazil. In India, it works much, much better. It, it has problems, it has problems. But, but nevertheless, by law, uh, people are not supposed to be hungry. And this is, this is a tremendous achievement uh, in terms of policy, in my view. So this is, this is but, but there is a lot of science going on in India, which, which the world should be more aware of. And this is one of the primary 
reasons why I, I um, give this lecture. There is also the need of the students. There is the need of the of the colleagues, of the professors, of the especially the young prof the young professionals in, in science. Um, and so the overview of my talk would be like this: Why give a class on scientific writing to the to university students? What is the general format of the class? And and then I will share with you the over an overview of the class contents. That is to say, forward and principles key message carried by a, a manuscript which is being written, uh, how to define a blueprint for the manuscript that you would like to develop. And I will explain what I mean by blueprint. Uh, the tables and figures, the writing plan, the literature search, the writing techniques, and I will not spend much time on this. Uh, and then some critically important elements, last elements, abstract title, keywords, authorship, references. Then I will share with you some afterthoughts, which I share also with the students. So our world today is a world of appearances. Uh, our, our, it's a world of words and, and communication. Communication seems to be everything nowadays. And that is true in science, where, where commu communication is, is so paramount. In many societies in the world, there has been a shift from uh, there, there has been a shift from from a hidden science, a science which was kept in circles, you know, with, among religious groups, even with specific words and and in even languages and scripts, as in India, as in Sanskrit in India, and that hidden science of the past has become during the the modern age a public science, uh, and and this has led to the current advocates of the citizen science even. And that is that is because science is hard to convey. It's not easy to convey science to colleagues and to convey science to the public. And 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 yet never has been so much said or written on science than today. We see thousands and thousands of publications every year. But what what kind of science is this? Many scientists are lost in the maze of scientific communication channels. And, and this is especially true for young professionals and students. I think that education and, and training of, of young professionals and students is extremely important. Uh, it is important for them as individuals. It is important for their institution. Uh, it is important for their country. And it is important for the citizens of their country. And there are many reasons for this. For instance, Indian scientists, speaking of India, Indian scientists, and the Indian scientific community need to be better recognized internationally. At present, it is not sufficiently well recognized. The international science community beyond India is often unaware of the scientific progress that is achieved in India. And, and, and so science in India must not fall in the trap where, where it has fallen in the, the Western world. The, in the Western world, like in the USA, but also in Europe, there is suspicion, there is distrust, uh, of science and scientists by the by the general public, and this is because of miscommunication to a large extent. And so, publication in peer scientific peer-reviewed scientific journals it remains the gold standard for science communication. And there are many reasons for this. One is that it remains the main output target for young science professionals. For instance, an institution like ICAR. Is it has in place a number of procedures where publication numbers and publication quality is a key criterion for evaluation. Individuals, evaluation of also of organizations. Uh, uh, publications in, in peer, peer reviewed journals remains a reference for individual and, and collective evaluation, therefore, and they are still generally considered a trusted basis for uh, technology development. Uh, 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 for extension and education. And so this presentation today is, is meant to summarize a class which is given at GB Pont University for graduate students and gen, young professionals in science. So the first section of my talk is about the format of the class. Broadly, it is a very informal class. Uh, the audience can be very large, from 30 to 50 participants. It is difficult to have more than 50 participants. Actually, I had 60 plus, but, but it's not a workshop. 
it, it, it's not a workshop, that despite, but the, despite this, there is extensive exchange between me and between the professor and, and the participants through a number of questions. Why is it you want to write? How difficult is it for you to write? Do you think you write well? And, and why do you think you write well or not well? Why would you like to publish an article? What, how, how do you proceed with writing an article? Is it important for you to publish your work? And, and, and why is it important for you? Uh, do you read science? Do you read books? Do you read articles? How much of this? And also, how do you read? Do you read on a computer or on a tablet or maybe, maybe a smartphone? Or, or do you print the article and, and read it on paper? And, and are you making, taking notes uh, on, on what you're reading? There are many ways to read. And so the outline of the class is, is, is in, in essentially in four elements. The first element is motivation. I, I speak a lot of motivation. It's 30% of the class. It, it seems uh, very, very big, but I think this is a, a big, very big part. Then I speak of principles. I speak very little of techniques because those techniques are underpinned in, in the principles anyway, and even maybe in the motivations. And then I, I speak of the last elements uh, for a significant fraction of time. And so this is the outline of the class. There are 20, I think there are 21 chapters. There is there is the booklet, which, which I have shared with Dr. Agrava. Hopefully will, this will be published by ICAR and, and circulated on, on paper and, and on the web. Uh, and so there are sections such as forward principles, developing a key message, a good key message, and so on and so forth. Uh, so in blue, uh, in the red are the are the uh, in red are the two chapters dealing with the motivation. These are the most important chapters, in my opinion. The blue is about uh, is about principles. Is how the principles of developing an article, a manuscript. The the green is about the writing techniques. It's it's fairly quick. And and the uh, brown, the last elements are are. Um, very important, but I do not spend such a lot of time. And there is a 21st section at the end in terms of afterthoughts and the meaning of achieving success. What is success for us scientists? So if I could summarize all the class I give, because I don't want to swamp your mind with many, 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 I have many slides, but I don't want to, to take too much of your, of, your, of your memory. There is one slide to remember. This is the core of my class. As you see, there is a blue rectangle with a white lettering on it. Uh, this is a slide which I show to the students. So when you, whenever you see this in my slideshow, it means that this is a slide which I use in the class. And so in that slide, I show this cascade of, of things. First, uh, or zero, the elements, I will explain. Results, materials and methods, discussion, introduction, abstract, title, authorship, and keywords. This is what I propose to the, to the participants as the right order to writing a scientific article. This is the, the way to go in my, in my view with the first and the critical uh, roots of elements. And I will develop this later on. So I, the core of the class, 40% uh, deals with principles, the development of a key message, the elements of an article, the tables and the figures, the writing plan, and the need for a good literature search. In terms of forwards and principles, uh, we'll give a, a few examples. Science, I, I spend a lot of time with the participants in terms of on the on the issue of motivation, the need, the true needs to write, uh, trying to 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 see it not as, as a core, but but instead as a useful, meaningful, and necessary activity as part of any, of any scientist's life, uh, convincing the participants of the, the need to be both confident and happy to write. You cannot, it, one cannot be writing well if one is not happy with what, what one is writing. So you need to be reasonably confident and, and you need to be happy. Uh, and slowly make participants see that they do not necessarily write well, that progress in writing is both hard and slow. It is hard and very slow. It has been very, very hard to me, and I'm still learning. It is very slow. Uh, trying to convince participants that they do not write only for themselves, but they, that there is a higher purpose, that science is a common good, and that they want to modestly 
share their, their parts to this common good. And so there, there are higher purposes than the usual reasons. I have this exam, I have this, 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 this PhD to take, I have this promotion and so on and so forth. So in the foreword, I have these the different elements, the, the writing, the difficulty of writing, uh, writing well is useful and important, the learning to write in scientific English, science as a collective good, and the responsibility we have in terms of, of scientific writing. The, the, the ultimate reason for publishing a scientific article, and then this is a slide I show to the students, is, is that the science which is not published is lost forever. It is lost forever. Uh, I, I try to speak about the key message, uh, uh, and then in terms of, of key message, one, one, one element I want to share with the participants is that tens of thousands of manuscripts every year are rejected and never published. And thousands of, of articles that are published this, each year, even those which are published, are never cited. And those are lost. And this is because the key message was not sufficiently strong. It was not sufficiently well articulated. So we have also, with the, with the participants, we have the classic reasons for submitting a manuscript. It is expected for a degree, a promotion, for expanding a publication list. Uh, there are no good, these are not good reasons good enough. These are not reasons that are good enough. There is a need to overcome the necessity of the moment and, and to convert that personal needs into a scientific reason. One must have a scientific reason to submit the manuscript. Otherwise, there's no need to submit. There is no, philosophically speaking, there is no reason to submit a, a, a scientific article if this, if this scientific article does not provide, that does not convey something new, something that contributes to a collective good. And so a good key message must be specific. Uh, the point put forward must be must represent the result of the work, and they have direct implication with current questions. A key, a good key message must be short. It should be written on a maybe on a piece of paper on the corner of a table, but just no more than three sentences, no more than five lines. And this this is an exercise I give to to participants. Try to write your you know try to to outline the key message that you have in mind in three sentences and no more than five lines. And you need to be perfectly clear, first of all, to yourself as author, and then the co-authors, if you have, and with the colleagues who are not directly involved in it. You, one has to be very, very perfectly clear in this key message. First of all, with oneself. And so the key message may involve the specific results achieved. This is again a slide I show to the participants. You see it's a, a, the title is an orange, a, a blue word, a rectangle with a white te text on it. So these are the elements which can be shown in the key message. And underpinning a key message are the novelty of the science. Uh, and we have a discussion with the audience. Uh, I have a discussion with the audience of what is the meaning of novelty in science. So it, it touches, the class addresses some philosophical issues. And that is true. We need to, to address some philosophy. After all, a PhD is a doctorate in philosophy, isn't it? So. We, we talk about what novelty is in science. And the goal, a competing level of, no, of novelty against a backdrop of scientific knowledge. In order to be, to be bringing about novelty, you need to know something about the backdrop of, of what's been done before. And so this is where, where literature search is so very important. And so I'm trying to convey the, 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 the meaning of this to, to the participants and say, you are not in a competition. You are, you are trying to share what you do. And so you need to know what other people are doing, not because you compete with them, but because you want to work with them. Then the elements of the article. So this, these are the elements. The elements are the tables, the figures, and the key pieces of results that could be written in the text. They are arranged sequentially. Each of them provi must provide a unique, non-overlapping contribution to the manuscript. And all of them are, have to be connected via the text. So there, there must be very regular and, and streamlined reference to, to these elements within the text. And then again, each element, what I call elements, those tables, figures, or piece of results, they, they, they must derive from one of the components of materials and methods. And then each element, in turn, generates one of the components of the results section. And that and those elements of the results section lead to one component of the discussion. 
So in short, this is this flow chart. We start with, start, let's start with the backbone at the center, the elements, the tables, the figures, maybe pieces or elements of, of, of results. And you have different methods on the left-hand side. So these are different methods, one, two, three. And method one may generate element one and element two. Method, method number two may, may generate element three, a table. Method number three may generate element four and element five. These are tables or figures. So these are shown in the results. And the results has six, six subsections on, on one, two, et cetera, up to five. Uh, has five sections, sorry. And then and those results are taken up again in the discussion. So the result is a very, very dry part of the text where one writes only what is being seen on the figures and the tables. Whereas so results are very dry, whereas the discussion may be much more uh, developed. And we have to prepare the elements, assuming that readers are, are, are lazy. And, and very often they are. They are lazy, they may be busy or both. And so we, we leave a world of overwhelming information. Too much information, too many information destroys communication. And, and this, if, you, if one makes figures and graphs too complicated, the manuscript will be very hard to write and to connect with the elements. So the, 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 one, one has to consider a limited number of figures, a limited number of tables, and each of those categories must be made as simple as possible. As possible. One tip about the, the review process is that the reviewers are exceedingly busy. They have no time. They review the work on their own unpaid additional working time, so they cannot afford to be patient. So the elements, those tables, those figures, they must convince them at a glance that your submission is serious, interesting, and worth, worth their time. And then speaking of success, well, you, you success is already with the fact that one is able to preparing elements that are satisfactory to you, author. As an author, you are happy of the figures and the tables and that you are confident and happy to write on them. Uh, tables and figures. So I, I speak a lot on the tables. What is a good table? Trying to be, make it short, simple. And ask yourself the big question. Will this table be readable? Make readable tables. Avoid huge, those huge, tremendous lengthy tables which never are being read carefully and avoid using you know these silly numbers like a yield of 4.22364 kilograms per area unit no it, it has to be simplified and so there are many ways to do that and I explain this or a sum of square of 12654.39535 this doesn't mean anything to any reviewer the figures. The figures are important because they have a durable mental Im imprint. Uh, a figure can can be very, very effective in conveying the interest of the reader, but a bad figure may be very destructive. So figure is difficult and ch very challenging and very important. It has to be simple, clear. It has to convey exactly what the reader wants, wants to, needs to see, and, and all useless details should be removed. Uh, then I speak of the instruction to the authors. I speak again of the figures, which must be a standalone with a comprehensive caption. Uh, the writing plan. The, as you can see, the writing plan comes towards the end of the towards the end of the class. It's number ten only. So this is what the slide I was showing before with with these nine zero to eight elements pointing there. This is again the the, the flow chart. This is a, one of also the, that could be the main slide of my of my lecture to the students to the participants, trying to show that the backbone of an article is something which is not written in the article. The backbone is this series of elements, tables, and figures. Then I speak of the necessity of a good literature search. I mentioned that, so it is paramount. It involves analysis. It's not just collecting PDFs and, and references. No, no, it requires analysis. It requires careful reading and analysis. Very often, students do not have the time for this. I know, but this is this is true. Uh, and I speak of the literature. Uh, all the all the value a good literature can have, for instance, in showing where are the knowledge gaps. And, and this is a very good entry point for a good article. 
And it's not meant to compare one's work with the other. It's not a competition. We are contributing to a collective good, to a common good. And I speak a little of the of the writing techniques. I don't spend too much time on this, but uh, I I what I try to say is is I I advise <coughs> participants to make short sentences. I advise them to use the very simple structure: subject, verb, complement. I advise to use as few adjectives as possible. Uh, I advise to 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 very, use very few complements, as few as possible and to not use adverbs if possible. If, 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 if one is using an adverb, it means to say that the verb itself has not been carefully chosen. So it means that one is not writing very efficiently. If you have no need for adverb, it means your, your style is right. And then the last elements would be abstracts, title, authorship, keywords, references. The, all these are very, very important. I do not have to, much much time to, to talk about this, but this is about the, the good abstract, a, a conclusive sentence about the significance, the implications, and, and, and the perspective. So I provide the, the participants with tips on how to, to do this. There is something which is important also, is, is, which is the title. A good title is difficult to develop. It really is. My view is that it is safe to develop a seemingly dull, yet sincere and complete title. Uh, it is important to not change the title during the review process unless it is requested by the reviewers or the editor. It's important to be short. A, sh a short title is the best because there is an abstract coming after it. So a short, very, very, uh, a short yet complete title, uh, something which says all the words that, that the reader needs to read in the title. In the title, one has to be simple and direct. And direct. Do not try anything fancy. Fancy titles can be can be motivation for irritation in the reviewers or the editor. It has to simply a good title has to be short and informative at the at the same time. It's not easy. Then the authorship I leave this blank. This is an ethical issue, something which would deserve a class of its own. It depends on the lab, it depends on the scientific community, it depends who is working with whom, etc. The keywords uh, are important. It's important to not use a keyword which is not truly linked to the actual work. The references, I'm providing information on this. For instance, never cite works that has not been read uh, by the authors, because this would be other, dishonest otherwise. You need to cite work that you know, cite, to cite work that you have read, and so on and so on. All the all the ethics which is behind these, and the, do not cite only the the articles from famous journals. Do not cite only the most recent references. Sometimes very old articles are excellent sources, and so in terms, for instance, in terms of methodology or concepts, so those articles are very very well worth uh, citing. And then I, I close the class with a general discussion about achieving success and most specifically, what is it? What is the meaning of accept of an acceptance of an article? Except celebrating, what is what is it? What is what is that meaning? And and the meaning, the long term meaning of publishing your research. And and so I'm I'm trying to to bring the the audience to think about this. Success for a scientist is something complicated. Success. We are not selling cars. We are not selling. Uh, we are not selling stuff. We are not selling our science. We are not trying to become famous. We are simply trying to to contribute to science. So, what is success for us? And this is this is my class. This is what I try to convey. And and with this, I I, I am finished with my talk. Uh, I shall be very very glad to take can questions. You, uh, can you unshare this? Yes. Or I can do from here. Can you? Yeah. I okay. Can. Thank you. Excellent, excellent uh, presentation and excellent points you have uh, provided for this based on your experience. And uh, we have to really assume that the readers are lazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very <laughs> important point. So uh, I know uh, there may be several uh, questions, but uh, uh, I, I can uh, allow a few of them. So can you raise your hands if you have any questions, electronic hands? 
uh, I have uh, with me a very important person uh, who has published a lot of papers, uh, Dr. B.S. Dillon, uh, who was the director, uh, vice chancellor of uh, Punjab Agriculture University. So, uh, Dr. Dillon, sir, uh, uh, you want to add any point in this because you also have a lot of experience regarding this. Let me just uh, provide the permissions uh, to them uh, to speak. Good afternoon, Dr. Dillon. Yeah, let me just provide the permissions. Yes. Uh, Dr. Dillon, sir. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for very kind words. And thanks to Professor Sarji. Savari, is it pronunciation correct? Yes. Or, it, yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm very sure it is not a correct one. Anyway, it's pleasure reading you. And in fact, I will say that I have learned how to write uh, scientific papers uh, from the reviewers when I published in American journals. I, I'm from genetics and plant so crop science was number one on priority, or genetics or biometrics. Yeah. or biometrica or euphytica and plant breeding and nowadays theoretical and applied genetics. I am quite old. So I see some disturbing trends in publications. The review process has weakened. Speed has increased many times. Yeah. It's so so fast. And yeah. it used to it's a wonderful review. And uh, 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 the, the predominance of uh, Commercialization of publication. Yes. And uh, the uh, again, I will not try to give any hint. The publishing companies which are doing wonderful work, now they are publishing like machine and yes. they want the reviewer to do yes. everything in 21 days. Yes. Three weeks or so. We yes. start getting... Well, that's, uh, that's yeah yeah how, how, how true and then in india we had additional problem of linking what you said in your introductory remarks also linking yeah. the publications with the promotion yeah so many predatory journals have come up and uh, yeah, so yeah, much yeah. rubbish things are being published but in yeah. olden times I, I i used to say you can publish any rubbish thing provided you know where to submit it yeah. <laughs> Olden time also very poor journals. <laughs> but on the whole, I was very happy and I will again sum up that uh, I being a, uh, yeah. I, and, and I'm, I'm not knowing the English, I mean, got educated yeah. in the business school and and I learned reviews from the, I mean, uh, yeah. this writing from reviewers, from the comments. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So how, I how, 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 how to have some quality publications or improve the quality? Uh, quality is there. Let us not say that is true. That is true. I, I completely agree with you, Professor Dylan. The, 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 the truth is, though, as you said, the reality is that uh, reviewers have less and less time to review the work. And therefore, it, it is becoming more and more difficult to secure good quality reviews. Because there is the other side of, of, the, of the scene, which is this. Me as, as editor, as editor-in-chief of the journal, I'm, I, I am facing tremendous difficulties in finding reviewers. The reviewers who are willing to do, to do the review. And then, and then sometimes the review is, is, is no good, it's not helpful. It, it is just saying accept or reject. This is not my question. My question is to make a review of the, of the work. And, and so, at the journal where, where I'm, which I lead, our our goal is to provide service to the to the to the authors, and that service is reviews, and this is we try to provide quality reviews to the to the authors. Many journals nowadays are making very sloppy, superficial reviews, and and the the, the issue is, and there are statistics. We are being judged. The journals are being judged on the basis of the speed of the turnover. They have to be fast. If they are not fast enough, they will move. Me, I don't care. I, I prefer to be slow. I prefer the journal to be slow and to provide good quality reviews. But many journals nowadays are making very, very quick reviews, often very poor quality. And uh, the reality also is that it is so quick, so fast, that today 
you see even very famous journals publishing things that are rubbish. It happens. You've seen this happen in science, in nature. They have to withdraw things. Why? Because they were too, too quick. <laughs> and so, and so it's, it, is, it is difficult. Uh, India has a very strong and powerful publishing industry. This is very good. Uh, I think I think that the balance will change. I think that the, the, there are, there is a pendulum. Uh, maybe we it is absolutely true as you said that publishing is a big business and there are very large publishing companies. One is one is uh, Springer, the other is Elsevier. There are smaller fish in the in in the water. Uh, it, one has to know the journal it, in order to, to for the authors taking the other side of the of the of the of the coin as an author it is it is important to take time to choose the the good journal and the good journal is not necessarily the one which will make nice comments and accept your paper the good journal if you if, if a scientist wants to grow a good journal is the one which will provide you with a good review yeah. And, and irrespective of the outcome. Then, then again, if you are a PhD student, if you have one year to finalize a manuscript and, and get your manuscript accepted by a journal before the defense, and if, if, if your position at ICAR is at stake, then what will you do? This is very, very hard to students. And now I, now I realize that students only have one year to conduct their research and to at least have one paper published in a journal. This is extraordinarily challenging for them. It is almost impossible. Uh, it, 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 take, it nearly takes one year to get one, one, art, one good article published nowadays. This is what the time it takes. Otherwise, it, it will be published, maybe, but it will be published maybe in a not, not so good journal, where, yes, the review, where the reviews is not good and where, and where maybe the impact factor is okay. But the meaning of impact factor is, is, is very arguable. And so my thinking is that two, is two things. One, there should be a class on scientific writing very early at the MSc level, starting at the MSc. So that students start, start very early to know how to do literature search, how to write a report, how to, because it, it's important you can get started with that and, and how to write, uh, how to, to to, to read carefully and how, how to how to uh, present articulated reasons why you take this subject for your MSc research. This is these are all very good exercises for the students to take. And then and then maybe in the future and then continue the class in, in PhD in the PhD years once a year. And then and then what would be wonderful, but I don't know if that is feasible in the Indian system, is to provide PhD students with more time for their research because otherwise they cannot publish. It's very, very hard. Or at least one thing that, that could perhaps be done is that uh, one year and a half before the end of PhD, making sure that each student uh, is, is aware, is, uh, is informed of, of, the, of the, the subject of, of of the research. So if, if the student is aware of the subject of, of the research one year and a half, beef, well, three, six months before starting the research itself, this is enough time to do a, a literature search. But all, all you said, Dr. Dillon, is, is true. Yeah, I, I, I just uh, uh, remind you because you're also now, I think, uh, of my age. Uh, yeah. In the instruction of the Stry Society, Crops and Society of America, and American yeah. Society of Ground and Soil Science, it was written that write, I, I'm talking of 1970s, write draft and keep it for six months. And now we want to do everything within six weeks or <laughs> something like that. How oh, oh, the world it has makes changed. No sense. <laughs> then another yeah. dichotomy which I faced, I, I worked a geneticist who was very strong and Quantitative genetics and mathematics. He, he shifted from mathematics to quantitative genetics. He yeah. always wanted to, wanted to write big formulas. And I told, I used to tell him, Professor, let us focus on the editor. They will not understand. So, what is your view? Should we try to show what we have done very explicitly? Or should we try on the editor that he should pick up something? If not yeah. all. I, I used uh, to say that, oh, 
this this this, this paper will not be understood by 99% of indian uh, thank you. Uh, readers uh, yeah. said that yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so thank so, you so what should thank be you. our focus thank you because thank citations you and uh, dr dilan sahab uh, excellent uh, points you have raised and uh, you may want to know you may want to know that the first manuscript by albert einstein was rejected right away <laughs> because nobody nobody understood it but uh, but everybody is not einstein <laughs> we don't like no, up to that level <laughs> uh, so thank you sir uh, may i ask uh, there is uh, dr uh, anil yes sir i am yes. present there yeah. i am uh, hi sir i am anil kotastana from indira gandhi krishi vishwavidyalaya raipur giovanni how are you fine <laughs> how is it yeah and the pleasure anyway, to hear you i wanted yeah uh, i really wanted to talk uh, ask you regarding uh, we are a little confused when we publish a technique Uh, which part has to be taken to the material methods and which part is to be taken to the results section that is really confusing and that's how i am not able to publish so many of my techniques and the okay. second part is uh, what about the graphical presentations or graphical abstracts which some of the journals they uh, really prefer to have because they are the very uh, nice way to have an expression and uh, they will really tell you a uh, lot many things uh, about the yeah, paper Yeah, that, yeah, that's what I would like to have your views on that. Okay, my my feeling is that okay in a standard research paper, the materials and method is something ex exceedingly important, of course. Uh, in my view, I would write it very in a very dry way. Uh, I would not I would not hesitate to make as many citations uh, in the materials and methods because uh, it it. it may be useful for the reader to know that the methods used in the work is related with some somebody else's work etc etc et so i would i would try to make several things i would first i would try to make the materials and methods section as structured as possible very very dry extremely dry uh, very articulated um, uh, and 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 with with all the necessary the all the necessary technical references no interference no comments on the methods used this would go in the discussion just explain what's been done and how it's been done and and using as much references as as is necessary but keeping things as as short and clear as possible it has to be very very uh, structured uh, then it may be that a manuscript is rejected because of the methods used and this is why in the in in the discussion a uh, first point in the discussion is a discussion on the methods used why is it that we use those methods and not others what were the alternate options of methods why is it we did not use them why would we did, why did we take this path of of methods we why why did we chose and and, and it's okay. it, it, why did we choose to, to take this approach and, and not another one i would be very this is a very very important point of the discussion which many many authors forget to make it's it is it is critically important now there there are oh, i think uh, dr katastani i know i know that there are there are journals that are specialized in methods and so maybe you are referring to those but in this field i am not knowledgeable i, I don't know as yeah, far as the uh, as far as the uh, graphical expert uh, 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 graphical summary uh, uh, is concerned i would go for something simple i would go for something which is conveying the idea uh, something which is conveying like a figure i would try to go for something that 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 is not crowded that is not complicated that is that can be grasped very easily remember that this graphical abstract will appear on a web page very very tiny very very small i would make it very plain and simple and and not yeah. not so sophisticated Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you uh, Professor Sargi. Thank you, Sarj. And uh, we take one uh, last question. I know a lot of persons uh, they just want to uh, have your presentation, the copy of the presentation, well, which we can circulate to them. Of course, so, uh, Dr. Gridhar uh, is asking, Gridhar, uh, dear Professor Sargi, uh, I would like to know why so many journals are getting converted nowadays to open access. and started taking the uh, apc 
uh, the uh, and even some reputed uh, publishing uh, groups have started this particular thing. So, any yeah. uh, response to this? Yes, yes, it's it is simple. Uh, there, there is a controversy. It's not over. On the one hand, there is a, a traditional system whereby you had an editorial board and reviewers. Uh, the reviewers uh, are anonymous. They they provide an evaluation of the manuscript and the decision is made. And 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 uh, the the publishing company uh, publishes uh, publishes the article when it's when it's accepted, and 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 the publishing company is making money from the subscription which is made by uh, individuals sometimes, but most of the time it is it is making money through subscriptions taken by universities, institutes, and so on and so forth. That's the that's the traditional system, the one which is still in force. This, which is still the majority. Then there is the other system. The other system is the one whereby the authors pay in order for their manuscript to be published. This way, the, art, the article and the, and the journal, which often is, is e-journal, this e-journal becomes free for the reader. So it, it makes it accessible to anyone in the world for free. Uh, it makes science uh, free. Uh, for anyone. But the, the problem behind this is that there are authors who do not have the money to pay for publishing their, their, their work. And that's one thing. The other thing is that, in my view, is, is an ethical issue, is a very, very serious ethical issue, which is that I would, I would never myself pay a journal in order for my work to be published, because then there is a conflict of interest, of course. You pay, and then your paper is, is published. This is not okay. This is unethical. There is an issue there. And so I don't know where this is going to go. I have no idea. And, and I know that some journals are, are asking for the horrendous levels of money to get to, 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 to get a paper published. This, this is not making sense to me. So there are, there are policies. Some countries are, uh, they, 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 in some countries, in African countries, the, the, uh, the, the cost of publications are, are, are very less. Or, or, even zero, but in a country like India, which is not seen as a, a as a poor country, uh, the the public publication costs still are very high. It's it's not as high as in the USA or as in Europe, but it's still very high. On top of this, uh, it excludes from the publication system individuals who may do research. Think about the social sciences, the so a psychologist, a sociologist, an economist. These people may work by themselves. They may not need to belong to a particular institution, a philosopher. Philosophy, you don't, don't need to belong to a university to be a philosopher. Uh, even maybe it's recommended to not be part of a university to be a philosopher. Anyway, uh, you cannot publish your work in a system like this. It's impossible. And so I don't know what the, I, I am, I may sound old fashioned in this, but I think that the, the old system was the, was the good one. It, I, I would believe that speaking of a common good, a common good is better protected by a collective. And in, in the in worst case scenario, that collective may be supported itself by the government, by the, yeah, by the, by the government, so, such as for India, instance, in India, ICAR, has taken has taken subscription to a number of journals all over the world, and this way, uh, ICAR students, uh, ICAR scientists and students, they can publish in those journals. This is a, a, a fair way uh, for for ICAR and and the science to make progress because students do not have the resource. Some labs do not have the financial resources either. It, can, it, it this is when when money comes into play together along with authorship, it opens the door to a lot of ethical questions. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Sagi. Uh, I know there are a lot of uh, other questions, but because of this posture of time, we will not take more questions. But uh, we will uh, circulate uh, the copy of uh, your yes, of course. Yes. to all the uh, persons to all these students uh, and that can be really of much help and you are also that. thinking to bring out a publication also a, a small booklet so uh, that, that also we can 
Yeah, that also yeah. we can just circulate to all. That's so right that's there. really a, a very useful, uh, thoughtful uh, presentation. And the key message is that let us be specific, the short, and perfectly clear in writing in our writing. And also, and also happy, trying to be happy. It's difficult those days. <laughs> to, to be, be happy, happy to be happy nowadays is difficult. But to try to be happy with one's work, yeah. it is a very very strong motivation. And we should have the novelty in our uh, uh, in our uh, presentation. So that's really a, a very good uh, message. Uh, so with that, uh, Sagi, we just uh, thank you very much. Thank you very uh, much for this. And uh, we uh, look Again, forward am... for many more interactions with you. And am, we have to really I... take advantage of your uh, experience, rich experience. Because I've been reviewed more than 3,000 research papers for so many journals is not a small talk, task. Yeah, I'm um, very, very proud to be talking with you today. I would like to thank you all to have been attending this discussion. I would like to, rem to remind Dr. Agraval, if I may, that I am available to give this class online using the class I'm giving to Pont Nagar. So if you want me to, to give a class to, to your networks. Um, yeah, sure. Or, I will, I will make myself available if, if you think this is helpful. Yes, this is certainly helpful and we'll just approach you for it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks all my uh, esteemed audience thank you uh, very much. for being present here. So thank you and bye-bye. Namaskar. Bye -bye.